When we first started looking at process costing, we said that at the very start of our process, we will input some materials into the first process, and then those units will go through a number of different processes before they become our output. And we looked at a diagram, something like this. So we input our materials into process one. In process one, we will incur some conversion costs. And after our units are completed in process one, they will be sent over to the next process where we will incur some additional conversion costs. And then at the end of process two, perhaps we will have our output to finished goods. Now, in many manufacturing environments like this, like oil refinery, our output might be a number of different products. So we won't just be producing a single product. So perhaps our output at the end of our two processes will be product A, product B, and product C. The split-off point in our process is the point where we divide our output into our three separately identifiable products, in this case, products A, B, and C. If we have a situation like this, where our output is more than one different product, then the costs incurred up to split-off point are called our joint costs. And what we want to consider in this section is if we have more than one different product of output, how do we divide or apportion our costs across each of our products? Now before we get into that, we need to consider what type of products may be included in our output. There may be two different types of products we produce. The first is called a joint product. Joint products are two or more products which we produce as part of our manufacturing process, each with a high saleable value to the company. So our production process is geared towards producing these joint products. So let's just, let's just note that down. A joint product is two or more products which are separated at some point in our processing each one with a high saleable value. So these are the products then we have set up our entire manufacturing environment in order to produce and sell. Now this is different to what we call a byproduct. A byproduct is a product which is produced as part of our production process but is more of a bonus to the company. So a byproduct is a product that usually is either a very low quantity or has a very low sales value. We would not set up our manufacturing environment just to produce the byproduct. It just so happens that in the course of producing our joint products, we also produce this byproduct, which brings in a small amount of revenue to the company. So we'll note down our definition of a byproduct. So it is a product which is produced from a process and it will be of either insignificant quantity or insignificant sales value.
Now, when we're looking at a question on this area, we deal with our joint products and our byproducts differently. You would be told in an exam question whether a product was a joint product or a byproduct. So we're going to look at an example now to see how we deal with each of these product types and how we apportion those joint costs across each of the products we produce. Okay, so in this example, we have a company where three joint products and one byproduct are produced from a process. The total joint costs are £16,500 and we're given some information of the quantity of each product which is produced and the selling price of each of those four products. And we have been asked to apportion the joint costs using two different methods, the physical units basis or the sales value basis. You may be examined on either one of these approaches in the exam. So let's have a look at how we work through this. First of all, we need to deal with our by-product, which is product D. When we have a question involving a by-product, the first thing we do is reduce our joint costs by the sales value of the by-product. Once we have done that, we apportion the remaining joint costs across the joint products. And we are going to have to do this using each of the two methods asked for in the question. So the first bit is very straightforward. We need to deduct the sales value of the byproduct from our joint costs. Now we know our joint costs are £16,500. The sales value of the byproduct is just equal to the number of units we have produced, so 100 kilograms, multiplied by the selling price per kilogram. So the total sales value of our byproduct is 500 pounds. So our adjusted joint costs then will be equal to 16,500 minus the sales value of our byproduct, so 16,000 pounds. It is this 16,000 pounds then which we now need to apportion across each of our joint products. Now we've been told to do this in two different ways, the physical unit basis and the sales value basis. So we're going to begin then by looking at our physical unit basis. All we do under this method is look at the number of units we have produced of each product and what proportion is that of the total units produced across all three products. And we will use that to divide out the joint costs. So if we look at our products then, we had three joint products, A, B and C. And the quantity produced were 200 kilograms, 300 kilograms and 500 kilograms. So the first thing we need to do then is just add these three together 
to see in total how many kilograms of all three products have we produced. When you add them together, I hope you get a thousand kilograms. So now all that remains is to apportion out our 16,000 pounds looking at the quantity of each product we have produced. So for product A then, we have produced 200 kilograms of product A out of a total of 1,000 kilograms of production. So the cost we are apportioning to product A will be 200 over 1,000. So that is the fraction of the costs we are giving to product A. We multiply that by our adjusted joint costs of 16,000 pounds. So the costs we are apportioning to product A then will be £3,200. And we just need to do this again for product B and product C. So if we look at product B next, we have produced 300 kilograms of product B. So our calculation is straightforward then for product B. We have 300 over the total of 1,000 multiplied by 16,000, which gives us 4,800 pounds. And finally then, for product C, we have produced 500 kilograms of product C. So half of our total production was on product C, Therefore, we will be apportioning half of the costs to this product. So we just multiply that by our adjusted joint costs and we get £8,000. Now, if we just quickly do a check back and add our three apportioned costs values together, we get back to the £16,000. So our adjusted joint cost figure hasn't changed. All we have done is divided these costs out across our three joint products in some fair way. So that's the first approach we can take to apportioning out our joint costs, looking at the quantity of production of each product. The second method we can use is the sales value basis. So let's have a look to see how this works. If we are looking at the sales value basis, the first thing we are going to have to do is calculate the total sales value of each of our three joint products. So working that through then, Again, we've got products A, B, and C. Our quantities, 200 kilograms, 300 kilograms, and 500 kilograms. Our selling price, we were told in the question, is 20 pounds per kilogram for A, 14 pounds per kilogram for B, and £18 per kilogram for C. So just calculating the sales value then, we just multiply the quantity of units we have produced multiplied by the selling price per unit. Now the only thing you have to be very careful about when we're using the sales value basis for apportioning our costs is that we will always look at the sales value of the units we have produced. The examiner might also tell you in the exam how many units of each product we have sold. We would not use that to apportion out our joint costs. We would always calculate the sales value of the units produced. So, calculating this through then, for product A, the sales value of our production, 200 units by 20 pounds each, 
So the sales value is £4,000. For product B, we have 300 units at £14 each, gives us 4,200. And finally, for product C, we have 500 units at £18 each, giving us a total of £9,000. So now if we add together our three sales values to get the total, if you put that into your calculators, you should get 17,200. Okay, so we've done our sales value calculation. Now this time we're going to use this information to apportion out those joint costs. And remember, our costs to be apportioned are still the adjusted joint cost figure of £16,000. So, let's have a look. For product A then, the total sales value is 4000 out of a total across the three products of 17200 So for product A then, the fraction of the cost we are apportioning to product A will be 4000 over 17200 And we multiply that by our costs, 16000 so now we work out that the amount we are apportioning to A will be 3,720.93. Moving on to product B. The sales value of product B is 4,200 out of a total of 17,200 multiply by 16,000. So if we round to two decimal places to product B, you should get 3,906.98. Finally then, product C. will be 9,000 divided by our total 17,200 multiplied by our costs. So the amount we are giving to product C is 8,372.09. So once again, all we have done is divide out the costs across our three products in some fair way. But this time, we have looked at the sales value of our production units. And that's all we need to know about how to deal with joint and by products.